Baiju, the doctor we all needed but no one wanted. But with him returning in 4.6, I thought I would make an updated guide for him. Baiju is often played as an off-field support. He swaps in to use his elemental skill and burst, and then swaps out to the next party member. He has healing, small interruption resistance, and moderate dendro application for all his teams and playstyles. He is a very versatile unit, but I wouldn't use him as a main DPS, his damage is pretty low. He can also be played as an off-field driver. This is because he scales off HP, so he is very tanky, has very good healing, and has kind of shields, which makes him a comfortable driver. However, his normal attacks are insanely short range, so it can be troubling hitting enemies and applying Dendro. He has a fairly quick normal attack sequence that can proc characters' abilities like C6 Fischl, Yellen, and Jingcho. Baiju's normal attack deals poor damage in a very small AoE. His charge attack is quite slow and consumes a lot of stamina, it is not worth using these for damage. Baiju's elemental skill fires a homing projectile that deals 3 instances of dendro damage and returns to heal all of your team. In scenarios with multiple enemies, it can either attack one enemy 3 times or bounce between multiple enemies. For most characters, the team wide healing is on their elemental burst, but for Baiju it is on his skill and this makes him one of the best healers in the game. Baiju's elemental burst generates a shield for a character that is on field every 2.5 seconds for 14 seconds. It also heals the character and deals dendro damage in a small AoE after the shield breaks, times out, or refreshes. The shield is kinda weak but it does give interruption resistance even when it is hit and broken. You can still be staggered with Baiju's burst active if you take a lot of hits after the shield breaks. Baiju's burst is very good thanks to its safety and its pretty good off field dendro application. Baiju's first ascension passive gives 20% healing when the on-field unit drops below 50% HP, but the 25% dendro damage bonus is useless on Baiju since his personal damage is bad. Baiju's second ascension passive grants the on-field character healed by his burst a damage bonus to dendro related reactions for 6 seconds. This scales up with his max HP which is capped at 50,000. At 50,000 max HP it grants 40% aggravate and spread damage bonus and 100% burning and bloom damage bonus. This passive is mainly used for on-field units with extended field time. It is also additive with elemental mastery. Baiju's utility passive has no use in instance content like Spiral Abyss and Domains, but it is a little helpful when exploring the overworld. It is better for Fontaine when diving because there isn't a lot of ways to heal underwater. For talent priority, his burst is his best because it increases healing and shield strength. His skill is worth leveling as it increases his team-wide healing, but do not level his normal attack at all. My normal attack is only leveled because of a funny shot I made. You should raise Baiju to at least level 80 or 90. Level 90 is best for his max HP as it increases his healing and shield. If you are using teams with Farina, definitely do it. His healing helps increase team damage output with Farina's damage buff. For weapons, Jadefall Splendor is a very good option on Baiju because of its HP secondary stat and energy regeneration in its passive. Although the damage buff is not great because Baiju's personal damage is bad. This weapon also does not help the team in any way, so it is a very selfish option. It is the best, but not enough of a jump from R5 Prototype Amber to be worth wishing on. R5 Prototype Amber is Baiju's best 4 star option since it is basically a free Jade Falls Splendor. It also has HP as a secondary star and energy regeneration in its passive. The team wide healing is a nice bonus. With this weapon you can take off around 45% energy recharge from his requirement, which I will get into later. Favonius Codex reduces Baiju and his team's ER requirement, although it doesn't provide any healing buff or shield buff, and you need to build enough crit to proc the passive with only Baiju's skill. Here are some other weapons that I would only recommend if you don't have the first few. Hakushin Ring provides a nice ER and elemental buff to Baiju's Electro and Dendro teams. Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers provides a good HP secondary stat and a strong attack buff to a single teammate. It is difficult to reach Baiju's ER requirement on this weapon. Everlasting Moongla is not worth pulling for Baiju. It provides a HP secondary stat and energy with its passive if Baiju is on field. It is not better than Prototype Amber. Sacrificial Fragments at R3 or above is a good option in Nilu Bloom teams. Baiju would trigger a fair amount of bountiful blooms, it helps reduce the ER requirement and provides an extra instance of team wide healing. A Thousand Floating Dreams is not worth pulling or using on Baiju. This catalyst does offer a team wide EM buff but it is just better on Nahida. Sacrificial Jade basically provides the same HP percentage as Prototype Amber, but it doesn't have any energy regeneration. Ok time for artifacts. Four Piece Deepwood Memories is Baiju's best option in Dendro Reaction teams, if no other teammate is using it. It provides 30% Dendro Resistance Shred and increases spread and bloom damage. Baiju can sometimes struggle to trigger the 4 piece effect in AoE situations against multiple enemies. His skill targets 3 enemies and his burst most of the time only hits 1 enemy. 
Units like Nahida and Kokomi should have it if they're on the same team as him. It is not recommended in aggravate teams where Baiju is the only Dendro teammate. The 4 piece effect does not help aggravate damage. 4 piece Ocean Hued Clam is the jack of all trades set for Baiju since most of the time he can deal maximum damage from the passive with his skill and burst. This is good because if another character is using 4 piece Deepwood Memories, Baiju should not be using it. 4 piece Instructor is a 4 star artifact set. It provides a team wide 120 EM buff for 8 seconds if Baiju triggers a reaction while he is on field. Also, because it is 4 star, it will have less stats than a 5 star artifact set. Opie's Noblesse Oblige gives a team wide 20% attack buff for 12 seconds after he uses his burst. This should be used for attack scaling units in aggravate teams because spread and bloom teams usually scale with EM. Opie's Song of Days Past is a niche artifact set that is best in single target fights. The buff lasts for 5 instances of damage, so it is bad in AoE fights. The 4 piece Ocean Hued Clam is generally a better artifact set for Baiju that results in higher team damage in most instances. Baiju does have a pretty big EI requirement, so a weapon that helps him with that is really good. He does however only have to focus on HP percentage and energy recharge stats, so you can reach the requirements pretty easy. For artifact stats you want HP percentage or energy recharge on Sans, HP percentage on Goblet, and HP percentage or healing bonus on the circlet. For substats you want ER percentage until you reach the required amount and then HP percentage until you hit 50k, then elemental mastery if you can. Ok so I'll quickly go through some teams. Here are some quicken teams. Here are some hyperbloom and burgeon teams. And here are some nilu bloom teams. Baiju synergizes really well with Farina. His party wide healing works well with Farina's HP drain and buffing mechanic. For constellations, Baiju C1 grants him an extra charge of his elemental skill. This improves his Dendra application a lot, increases his team wide healing a lot, makes him easier to play in teams, and will grant extra Dendra particles. The additional charge does have a 10 second cooldown. Baiju C2 provides an additional instance of Dendra application every 5 seconds and increases his team's healing a good amount. This is good for teams that use off-field Baiju as their Dendra application. Baiju C4 increases the team's elemental mastery by 80 after using his burst. This one kinda sucks. His C6 adds HP scaling to his burst which increases his own damage. When his skill or gossamer sprite hits an enemy, a new shield is created which is another instance of Dendra damage and application. This is a very underwhelming C6. Here are the pros and cons. Pros. He is a very versatile Dendra unit. Great team wide healing, his skill heals the entire party every 10 seconds. His first constellation lets you heal twice. Cons Very weak in terms of his own damage. Below average Dendra application for multiple targets without constellations. Other characters shields can be far superior. And that's it for Baiju, I personally would recommend him, unless you already have your eyes set on your favourite waifu. Let me know if you liked the video, if you did subscribe, if you have anything to say leave a comment, and thanks for watching. You can expect more of these for Genshin, Star Rail and Zenless Zone Zero. See ya.